Broadcasting from Wilson Area High School, this is the Warrior News, your place to start off the day. Reporting live at 7.44 a.m., the Warrior News starts right now. Good morning, Wilson. Today is Tuesday, April 10th, 2018. I'm Peter Rivera. And I'm Brandon Smith. During the month of April, all fifth period classes in high school will compete against each other in an annual Pennies for Patients event. All the money collected will be donated towards Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. See Key Club if you have any questions. Tuesday, April 17th will be the Day of Silence, a national event sponsored here at Wilson by students in GSA and Warrior Club. On this day, participants will remain silent all school day as a way to draw attention to the silencing effects of anti-LGBT bullying. If you would like to participate, please see Ms. Brown in the library by Wednesday, April 14th to sign up and register for a t-shirt. All interested students are welcome to participate, but you must sign up in advance. Attention seniors, if you would like to be considered to speak, to speak at this year's graduation ceremony, please write a letter to Mr. Friedhoff and submit no later than today. The letter should, be, should answer the question why I should be chosen to speak at graduation. Seniors will then vote from the acceptable candidates to choose who will speak. The last day to order a yearbook is tomorrow. Only students who order a yearbook by April 11th will be guaranteed a copy. See Ms. Girl, room 12, if you have any questions about how to order. Prom tickets are on sale in room 203. Please see Ms. Schaefer if you have any questions or if you need an information packet. Senior members of the softball team, please be sure to turn in your senior day forms no later than Friday, April 13th, so that your bio information will appear on the announcer sheet on senior night. Senior members of the baseball team, please turn in your senior day forms to the office no later than Monday, April 16th, so that your bio information will appear on the form on senior night. That's all we have for you today, Wilson, but stay tuned for the physics moment of the day. Good morning, I'm Mr. G with your physics moment of the day. Today, magnetism. We have a little pink steel paper clip coated with a little pink plastic so it's very visible. As you can see, there's a string holding it down and a fairly powerful blue magnet pulling it up. If we take a look at the forces, here's our blue magnet. Here's a pink paper clip and the thread pulling it down. Force magnetic up, the weight of the paper clip mg down, gravity and the tension in the string pulling down. And we say it's in equilibrium, the forces all add to zero. They're all equal and opposite, as we like to say. Well, what can block a magnetic field? Can something like aluminum foil, if we put the aluminum foil between the paper clip and the magnet, the magnetic field goes right through aluminum. Here's a piece of copper. Take a look, we've cleaned the bottom, it has that classic penny look. <laughs> copper doesn't block a magnetic field. SN from chemistry, tin. Tin doesn't block a magnetic field. Zinc, Z-N, zinc doesn't block the field. Here's lead, guys. This will stop even an x-ray. But lead will not stop a magnetic field. About a piece of wood. A piece of wood won't block a magnetic field. Glass. You go carefully here. Glass will not block a magnetic field. Hopefully you can see the paper clip still being suspended by the magnetic field. Paper, no surprise, if wood didn't block, paper doesn't block. One sheet, two sheets, 500 sheets. Magnetic field goes right through paper like it's not even there. There is one material. FE from chemistry, iron or steel. I have to go careful now because this is going to be pulled up by the blue magnet. But uh, as you can see, <clears throat> the steel was able to block or deflect the magnetic field. This is why when you go into Home Depot and you have trouble getting signal with all the steel in the roof and the sides, you'll see signs on the wall, free Wi-Fi, because oftentimes you can't get cell phone or data inside a steel clad building. I'm sure there's places in the high school here where you have trouble getting signal as well. All right, we're gonna leave this behind and we're gonna go to the back lab and show you how a bar magnet, a straight magnet can be used as a compass. 
Hi, we're in the back of the lab now, and as you can see, the back wall is approximately north as far as the outside world is concerned. If you look over here, you can see we've marked a magnetic compass and north for your convenience, and we've lined up the fish tank that the back wall of the fish tank is now north. I'm going to take a bar magnet, north on the red, south on the white, and I'm going to put it in backwards. And this large magnet is going to act just like the Boy Scout compass down there. You'll see that it will turn itself around and it will eventually line up the red part seeking north. A compass is nothing more than a magnet that's free to pivot. And if we give our friend time, I think you'll see that it will end up pointing north towards the back of the physics classroom. I'm Mr. G, and this was your physics moment of the day.